There are endless amounts of religions out there in the world. Some are considered a lot more crazy than others. And the first religion I'm going to be talking about is Rastafarianism. So the Rastafari people believe that the Ethiopian king Haile Selassie is the god of all. The aim of the Rastafarian religious movement is to restore the fire in African identity which suffered because of the forces of colonialism. One of the most famous Rastafarians was Bob Marley, who followed the principles of the Rastafarian lifestyle including ritual use of marijuana, avoiding alcohol, and wearing one's hair in dreadlocks. Next we have the Aghori. So the Aghori is a Hindu cult who perform crude cannibalistic rituals in order to achieve the highest level of enlightenment. Followers of this cult carry a kapala, which is a cup made from a skull. They will eat anything from rotten food to animal poop. An Aghori named Kinaram is responsible for these beliefs. They believe he is the reincarnation of Lord Shiva. Then we have Realism. So Realism was found by the former race car driver Claude Vorilan, now known as Rael, and that was back in 1974. This church follows the beliefs that Rael was captured by aliens and taken to the planet of Elohim, where he spent time with Jesus, Buddha, Joseph Smith, who was the founder of Mormonism, as well as Confucius. Aliens informed Rael that they created humans in their lab 25,000 years ago and will be revisiting again in Jerusalem in the year 2025. So it's 2018 now, so we're getting pretty close. Let's just see what happens in the year 2025. Okay, so the next religion is the Nation of Yahweh. Founded in Miami, the Nation of Yahweh is a religion that believes blacks are the true Jews and belong in Israel. As for the white Jews who live there, they are considered as white devils and are to be vanquished. Now, this religion practices neither Christianity nor Judaism, instead preaching Yahweh ben Yahweh as the Son of God. Yahweh ben Yahweh was the adopted name of Hulan Mitchell Jr., who founded the nation of Yahweh. Moving on now to the universe people. So the universe people, or the cosmic people of light powers, is a Czech and Slavic new religious movement founded in the 1990s who claim that they communicate with aliens. The religion is centered around Ivo A. Benda and several others. Their belief system is based upon the existence of extraterrestrial civilizations communicating with Benda telepathically. Okay, so we talked about Rastafarianism, but have you ever heard of Pastafarianism? Yeah, it sounds completely made up, but then again, isn't all religion kind of made up? Pastafarians follow the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster for real, yeah. And uh, do not they don't really take themselves too seriously. In fact, that's the whole point of the religion. The story of the religion is that everything began with the Great Flying Spaghetti Monster who worked with pirates to bring good people to Earth. Pastafarians believe that the world has arisen from the Flying Spaghetti Monster and their official clothes are pirate clothes. So if you're just walking down the street and you see somebody dressed as a pirate, just be like, hey, Pastafarian! And uh, just hopefully they're part of this religious, kinda religious movement. It's kind of like a spoof religion. If they're not, then you'll just completely look like an idiot when you yell that to somebody in the street. So be careful, guys. <laughs> okay, so this one, yeah, the Church of Euthanasia. It's technically a political organization, not really a religion. So this group refers to itself and acts like a church in many ways. It was started by Reverend Chris Corda, and they believe that the world is way overpopulated. The Church of Euthanasia encourages members to even take one's own life and avoid procreating at all costs, as well as advocating cannibalism to avoid burying bodies. We're coming close to the end of this episode and next up we have the Aetherius Society. So in 1954, George King started the Aetherius Society which hopes to combine alien wisdom with cosmic masters and yoga into something that will bring balance to humanity. They believe Jesus, Buddha, Krishna are aliens. The society is named after Aetherius, who is a cosmic master from Venus. That's said to have been telepathically contacted and channeled by George King. Okay, so now our second last religion is the Bullet Baba's motorbike. This is the only spiritual movement in the world where people worship a vehicle. Villagers in Chotila, India have built a shrine for the motorcycle and its dead owner. The shrine has a Royal Enfield Bullet 350 cc motorcycle as its deity along with the photo with bullet baba 
who died in an accident at that very spot. Now our final religion in this episode is Jedism. So there are actually people who have founded a religion or way of life based on the belief of the Force as a very real power in the universe. Jedism also adopts the beliefs from Asian religions like Buddhism and Taoism. Jedism has no central organization, but the Temple of the Jedi Order in Texas has issued a code for believers called the 16th Teachings of the Jedi. Okay, wait a minute, guys. All right, so normally here on the channel, my name's Dave Wobble, by the way, for those who are coming to the channel for the first time. Normally here on the channel, Leroy does his own videos and I do my own videos, but when I was editing this video, I was like, wait a minute, Leroy, you're pronouncing Jediism or Jediism as Jediism. It's pronounced Jediism. Now, I actually called him up and he said the reason he did that was because, you know, on some pages they actually pronounce it with one eye, or they spell it with one eye instead of two. So he got a little confused. And the other reason why I'm in this video is because I also want to just add in some extra information because, first of all, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm not really into the Jediism, you know, religion because I think that's a little bit weird. But I just want to add that there was a huge phenomenon when it came to this religion because in 2001 this is when the religion really became popular when there was this weird sort of phenomenon this giant movement where people in english speaking countries like canada new zealand australia many people within those countries had written that jedi was the religion for the census that they did in those countries for example in the uk there was approximately 390,000 people who wrote down that jediism was their official religion which actually made it the fourth highest religion in the entire country because in 2001 in the UK 70% of people identified as Christian 16% identified as non-religious while 7.8 chose not to respond but the Muslim religion came at 3.1% and Hinduism came at 2.1% and Jediism came in at 0.7% also as for the church in Texas they by 2015 got tax exemption by the IRS so there you go, there's just some extra cool facts about this religion. Let me know which of these religions you've never heard of before. Starting off at number 10, we have cow die. Now this has absolutely nothing to do with sacrificing cows, so don't worry, you can keep watching. There's no animal cruelty in this episode at all. Cow die, also called cowism, is a syncretic religion that's native to Vietnam. And that big word, syncretic, means the reconciliation or fusion of different belief systems. Cow die means high tower, or high places and it was founded by a man named Van Chu who claimed to have received revelations in 1919 during a seance. Ooh. Then things got really creepy okay so Van started talking to the spirit and the spirit started talking back to him and he said that his name was Duke Cao Dai and as creeped out as he was Van Chu he believed that he was talking directly to God and from there Kaodism was formally established in the year 1926. Kao Dai contained certain principles from Confucianism, Taoism, beliefs in karma and rebirth from Buddhism, an organization similar to Catholicism. Next up is Falun Gong. Falun Gong means law wheel practice. And the main Falun Gong text is Zuan Falun, meaning rotating the law wheel. It describes the wheel of law as a mystical orb of energy that rotates in the lower abdomen and the energy gives health and has supernatural powers linked to it. Falun Gong is a Buddhist based practice of meditation and moral living. Although it came on the public scene in China in the year 1992, its roots go way back thousands of years. Today, tens of millions of people practice Falun Gong in China, but unfortunately for people who practice this, they've been the target of intense persecution, especially since the year 1999, when the Chinese Communist Party began the anti-religious campaign to eliminate Falun Gong practices in China. The Unification Church is up next, so I'm about to take you to church, amen. Yeah, well that's more like Southern Black Church, but this is totally not that. What the Unification Church is, is actually a religious movement founded in South Korea by a man named Reverend Sun Myung Moon. The religion was originally known as the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. But since the 1990s, it has shifted into a collection of independent organizations associated with the Unification Movement. The Unification Church sees Sun 
Myung Moon as the Messiah who will put God's love into his followers and complete the work that Jesus started. Born in the year 1920, Sun Myung Moon was raised in the Presbyterian Church, which eventually excommunicated him for heresy. According to his teachings, the world was created from God's inner nature, which is reflected in the two expressions of life. The first is Sung Song, meaning cause and masculine, and Hyung Song is result and feminine. Sun Myung Moon believed that although Jesus was able to create the conditions necessary for humanity's spiritual salvation, he did not marry anybody, so he wasn't able to complete God's plan. No surprise why he got excommunicated bringing up ideas like that. At number seven, we have Aladura. So Aladura mixes Anglican, Pentecostal, and traditional African beliefs. Now, there is a big emphasis on healing and attaining salvation in this life. The religion's ministers are given an iron rod and it symbolizes the powers of the prophet. A minister who is viewed as a prophet touches objects brought by people who come for prayers and for healing and apparently some real miraculous things start to happen. The term Aladura means praying people in the Yoruba language. The Aladura movement started at Ijebu Ode, Nigeria in 1918 and this movement later transformed into the Living Faith Church worldwide and to the Christ Apostolic Church. Today, many churches in the Western Nigeria are labeled as Aladura. Moving on to number six, we have Ekankar. The purpose of Ekankar is to make God an everyday reality in your life. It's a religious movement partly based on elements of yoga and was founded in 1965 by Paul Twitchell. Paul Twitchell was at one time a student of a yoga master by the name of Kirpal Singh. And Kirpal Singh believed that the universe was created by sound waves. And so the style of yoga that he practiced was known as sound current yoga. Because Paul Twitchell saw himself as a direct descendant of ancient sound current yoga masters, he modified the teachings of sound current yoga in to his own spiritual movement that became known as Ek for short. Members of Ek believe that every person is a particle of God called soul and people who follow this religion believe in the concept of karma and reincarnation and that the goal of life is to become a co-worker with God as opposed to becoming one with God. Now, don't think I mentioned this, but the word in Kankar means co-worker with God. Asatru is next. The term Asatru is a Scandinavian term consisting of two parts. Asa referring to the Germanic god and goddesses and Tru referring to faith. While Asatru was a popular religion in Iceland, some people had been converted to Christianity while traveling in Europe. During the first centuries of Iceland's history, Christianity just had a bigger impact and by the end of the 10th century, it was clear that Asatru Asatru was on the decline. Asatru was only re-recognized as a religion in the year 1973. The basic teachings of Asatru involves keeping the major festivals of the year, which generally fall on the solstices, the equinoxes, etc. And these events would coincide with the natural calendar and the changing of the seasons. The two main styles of ritual celebrations that are done in honor of gods and goddesses are called bloat and sumbel. There's also a lot of cultural and social activities that happen inside of this religion. But those who practice it are viewed as heathen. Okay, so I want to talk about the builders of Adityam or Bota for short. Adityam is a Greek word for inner shrine or holy of holies. Like Jesus, who many believe was trained in Kabbalah, members of this order aspire to build the inner temple to construct the holy of holies within. And holy of holies is just a reference to the most holy place, which was the final compartment of the temple used by ancient Israel. Also, Kabbalah is a set of teachings meant to explain the relationship between God and humans. Boda was founded in the year 1922 by Paul Foster Case, and he was a senior member of the secret society called the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn in the United States. After a disagreement with Moina Mathers, who was the head of the Golden Dawn at the time, he left the Golden Dawn and formed a separate order. Some members of the Golden Dawn followed him as well, and they believed believe that Kabbalah is a mystical root of both ancient Judaism as well as original Christianity. Moving on down the line, we have Mazdakism next. And no, this is not some
some weird Fifty Shades of Grey kind of spiritual practice. It's completely different. So the Mazdakites believed in two fundamental principles, light and darkness. Light is endowed with knowledge and feelings and acts by design and free will, whereas darkness is completely ignorant and blind and acts randomly without any sort of direction. Mazdakism is a religion founded by Mazdak, who is a socialist Persian Iranian reformer, prophet, and religious activist in the 6th century BC. In his early years, Mazdak was a member of the Zoroastrian priesthood, and the guiding principles of Mazdakism was to increase the light over the darkness through tolerance, justice, kindness, friendship, and love. Moving on to Chianduism. Known as Chiandogyo in Korean, the name stems from a Korean word meaning religion of the heavenly way. And this is a belief system where God is both transcendent and also operates within heaven, earth, and and inside of human beings. When one dies, one doesn't actually just go to some sort of other heaven dimension or anything like that, but rather they return to the one being. The fundamental doctrine of the religion is that all human beings are equal because all people serve God in their minds when they're born. The full essence of Chiondism is said to be contained in a 21 word formula that's recited as a way to enlightenment and it's translated as follows. May the creative power of the universe be within me in abundance. May heaven be with me and every creation will be done. Never forgetting this truth, everything will be known. And the final religion, Candomblé. Candomblé is a religion based on African beliefs, which is very popular over in Brazil as well. Followers believe that every person has their own individual orisha, which controls his or her destiny and acts as a protector. Now those who follow Candomblé believe in the one all-power God by the name of Aludumare. And by the way, Orishas are deities sent by the Supreme God. Most Orishas are said to be deities previously existing in the spirit world, and some are said to be humans who have been venerated, similar to Catholic saints. Collectively, ancestor spirits are called Baba Igum in Brazil, and this is also known as Igongon in other parts of South America. During important ceremonies, priests and priestesses will masquerade as Baba Igum, and then they have these specially choreographed dances in order to become possessed by each ancestor. Also, there's no concept of good or bad in Candomblé. Each person is only required to fulfill his or her destiny to the fullest regardless of what that looks like. But this does not give you a free ticket to do whatever you want. Candomblé actually teaches that any evil that you do or you cause to be inflicted on somebody will definitely be returned to you. Islam is one of the most influential religions that have ever existed. But what are some of the religions out there that are most similar to Islam in the central belief of there being one God? So let's take a look. Starting at number 10, we have Babism. Babism derives its name from the Iranian prophet Sayyid Ali Muhammad Shirazi, and he took on the title of the Bab. The Bab was a merchant from Shiraz in Qajar, Iran, who in 1844, when he was 24 years old, claimed to be a messenger of God. The Bab means gate or doorway, and this is in reference to the Mahdi or Redeemer in Islam according to the Twelver school of thought. He introduced the idea of a messianic figure who would bring a greater message than his own. To Baha'is, which I'll be talking about next, the Bab fills a similar role as John the Baptist, who is a predecessor or forerunner who paved the way for their own religion. Babism teachings were refashioned by the Baha'i. And yeah, so Baha'i comes at number nine. According to Baha'iteachings.org, the religion teaches the oneness of God, the unity of humanity, and the essential harmony of religion. Baha'u'llah, the founder founder of the Baha'i faith was a follower of the Bab and claimed in 1863 to be the fulfillment of the Bab's prophecy 13 years after the Bab passed away. Baha'i teachings are in some way similar to other monotheistic religions. God is considered a single, all-powerful being. However, Baha'u'llah taught that religion is progressively revealed by God through manifestations of God in the form of the founders of major world religions throughout history. Examples would be Buddha. 
Buddha, Jesus, and Muhammad. Druze is at number eight. It is a monotheistic and Abrahamic religion based on the teachings of Hamza bin Ali bin Ahmad and the sixth Fatmid Caliph Al Hakim b Amr Allah, as well as based on Greek philosophers like Plato and Aristotle. Jethro, the father in law of Moses, is considered to be an ancestor of the Druze, who is revered as the spiritual founder and the main prophet. The Druze only consider a person to be one of their own if that person's parents were both Druze. In the Druze community, there are men and women known as Ukal who have went through training to be able to read and understand the Druze sacred writings. These men wear dark black robes and the women wear white veils. There are also the Juhal, which means ignorant pretty much, who respect and follow the Druze teachings and are just happy and content to leave the deeper matters of the faith to other people to interpret. At number seven, we have Mandianism. Now, this is a monotheistic as well as a Gnostic religion originating in the second and third centuries that believes that John the Baptist was the Messiah. Mandian means having knowledge, and the Mandians viewed Jesus as a false Messiah, but they revered John the Baptist, who performed miracles of healing through baptism. And the Mandians view this as a magical process, giving immortality, purification, as well as physical health. Of course, you know, Rastafarianism had to be on this list. Well, you may not have known that, but Rastafarianism, also known as Rastafari, is a monotheistic religion that started in Jamaica, my birth country, and is classified both as a new religious movement and a social movement. It started back in the 1930s, and some of the core beliefs stem from the Old Testament of the Bible, with a lot of emphasis on the book of Exodus, where, like the children of Israel, Rastas believe that the people of African descent in the Americas and around the world are exiles in Babylon. They believe that they are being tested by Jah who is God, through slavery and economic injustice as well as racial oppression. Rastas wait in hope to be set free and for their return to Zion, which is a symbolic name for Africa. Yazanism comes in halfway at number five, and Yazanism is a term used to describe the group of ancient monotheistic Kurdish religions that predate Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. In Yazanism, there is a belief in a pantheistic force known as Hawk. The force makes up the entire universe. Hawk upholds every single creation and has entrusted the universe in the Heft Sur, which are also known as the Heptad, the Seven Mysteries, or the Seven Angels. They were entrusted with the task of sustaining all life in the universe, as well as they can incarnate into persons that are known as Baba, meaning gates or avatar. The name Yazanism is a variation of the Kurdish name of one of the isolated branches, Yezidism, which literally means the Angelicans. The Samaritans come in at number four. So Samaritanism is the national religion of the Samaritans, and the Samaritans follow the Samaritan Torah, which they believe is the original as opposed to the Torah that the Jews used. Samaritans trace their lineage to Abraham as well, and the Samaritans claim that after returning from Babylonian captivity, the Jews forgot their early traditions. So for centuries, the Samaritans, who consider themselves completely distinct from the Druze, strive to preserve those customs. And there was a large number of Samaritans who lived in the Holy Land during the time of Christ. Samaritans view the site of an older Jewish temple known as the Temple of Mount Gerizim as more holy than Jerusalem's Temple Mount. We have Christianity, the largest religion in the entire world. Christianity has three main branches. There is Catholicism, there is Eastern Orthodox, as well as Protestantism. The religion stems from the teachings and the life of Jesus of Nazareth, who is believed to be the Messiah, the savior of the world. Christianity is a monotheistic religion where the central belief is that Jesus, who is the son of God, gave up his life for the sins of the world so that everyone, past, present, and future, could have a chance to be considered holy by God. God. And number two is Judaism. I know some of you probably thought this was going to be number one, but actually it's not. So some consider Judaism to be the world's oldest monotheistic religion. Jewish people believe there is only one God who has established a covenant, which is a special agreement between them. 
Their God communicates to believers through prophets and rewards good deeds while also punishing evil deeds. The origins of the Jewish faith are explained throughout the Torah and according to the Torah, God first revealed himself to a Hebrew named Abraham who became known as the founder of Judaism. And in at number one, we have Shabbakism. You've probably never heard of this one before, but Shabbakism is a syncretic faith and a religious practice by the Shabbat people. And these people primarily live in the Kurdistan region of the Mosul area of Iraq. And most Shabbats regard themselves as Shia, but some identify as Sunnis. Shabbakism has similarities that are very close to Islam. The main Shabbat religious text is the Baruch or the Kitab al Managib, which means the book of exemplary acts. Like Shia Muslims, Shabbats also pilgrimage to places including Karbala. Starting at number 10, we have Islam. Jinns and unseen beings can enter a human body physically and haunt them mentally. Normally in an Islamic exorcism, the possessed person lies down while a skilled therapist places their hand on their head while reciting verses from the Quran. The Azan, which is the call to prayer in Islam, is also played sometimes. Exorcisms conducted in Islam are part of a body of Islamic alternative medicine known as prophetic medicine. Coming in at number nine, we have Christianity. And now Christianity is probably the religion that's most known for exorcism. Christian exorcism is based on the belief that Jesus commanded his followers to cast out demonic spirits using his name. The person performing the exorcism is called an exorcist, and it's often a member of the Christian church, whether Catholic or Protestant. The exorcist calls upon God, Jesus, and even sometimes different angels to help with the exorcism. In general, people can considered to be possessed are not seen as evil in and of themselves because possession is considered to be an unwilling manipulation by a demon that results in harm to self, mentally or physical, as well as harm to others. Number eight brings us Judaism. So the first reference to an exorcism of some sort in Judaism comes in the Old Testament book of Samuel when David, who later became king, played music for the king at that time named Saul. And he was being tormented by a spirit regularly and the spirit would temporarily leave when David started playing his music. Jewish exorcism is conducted by someone who is deemed religious in the Jewish faith. Often exorcisms were publicly done in a synagogue or in the presence of a minyan, which is a group of 10 men. The goal is to have the evil spirit reveal its name and the exorcist then uses the spirit's own name to overpower it and eventually cast it out. Also, exorcisms in Hinduism. So the Atharva Veda in Hinduism is said to contain the secrets related to magic and medicine. Many rituals mentioned in this Veda are for casting out evil spirits, and typically an exorcism is conducted with the mantra and the yajna used in both Vedic and Tantric Hindu traditions. Vaishnavite traditions recite the name of Narasimha, which is a powerful avatar of the god Vishnu, and the scriptures are read out loud. Reading the 3rd, 7th, and the 8th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is also said to help. And also sprinkling water from a holy river is another practice that's used in Hindu exorcisms. Number 6 brings us to atheism. So in atheism, how exorcisms are done is, well, actually it's not done because they don't believe in God. Atheists don't believe in God. So if an atheist does get possessed, good luck guys, you're pretty much screwed. Sorry, atheists. Okay, moving on to number five. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. But atheists, they view possession as a misunderstanding of mental illness, and these conditions can be hysteria, psychosis, Tourette syndrome, epilepsy, schizophrenia, as well as many others. So any effective treatment of a mental illness would be the equivalent to an exorcism. Halfway in at number five, we have Buddhism. So in Tibetan Buddhism, there is a belief in multiple realms of existence. Humans, gods, ghosts, and 
and demons, all of them inhabit their own realm. When a person dies, they are in a state of limbo known as bardo between two states of existence. So instead of experiencing rebirth, the spirit of the dead person may actually end up as a ghost that still holds on to physical desires. This is when an exorcism may be necessary. Also, an actual demon can possess a person, and some common exorcism methods in Tibetan Buddhism are making offerings and performing rituals to appease the demons, as well as yarn spindles are put outside of a home or on a tree, and the colorful threads actually attract the spirits, and once the spirit is captured in the trap, the trap is then burnt to destroy the spirits. We got Sikhism at number four. So Sikhism does not have a concept of demons or Satan like the previously mentioned religions. In Sikhism, it teaches that indulging the ego is the source of evil actions. And the ego has five basic components. There's the pride or the ankar, lust or calm, greed or lobe, attachment also called mo, and anger is known as krod. Sikhism teaches that diligent contemplation on the qualities of Waheguru, which is God in Sikhism, meditation and prayer to God is the only way to be delivered from these. Doing this calms the voices of the ego and leads to an awareness of being one with God. Only three more religions left and at the number three spot, we got voodoo. So exorcism in voodoo is done with spells and chanting. There is however no set formula for them. But a common type of exorcism ritual would look like this. So the possessed person is brought into a room where the sorcerer or the voodoo priest is beating a drum. All the curtains are closed, the room is completely black, but they do have several different candles that are lit. Often things like dried beans, beads, as well as water in some sort of container are laid out in the room and oil is placed on the person who's possessed. Then the voodoo practitioner would go into a trance and would at the same time be chanting prayers for the evil spirits to leave the person. The second spot goes to the religion of Taoism. In Taoism, a person can be possessed by an evil spirit for two reasons. The first reason is a person disturbs a ghost, whether it's intentional or not, and the ghost now comes back and wants to get revenge. Another way a person can get possessed is if someone else uses black magic to conjure up a ghost to go and possess them. Chinese ritual officers and priests ordained by the celestial master will perform exorcisms, and Taoist exorcisms include chanting, physical gestures, as well as praying to cast out the evil spirits. And finally, the number Number one religion is Scientology. This one is very fascinating. So Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard, he wrote that humans are infested with body thetans. And these are said to be souls left behind on earth during an intergalactic genocide. These demons would detach themselves from the human body and leave after they, as well as the person that they are attached to, relived certain past events. Scientologists believe humans are immortal beings that have lived for trillions of years. And L. Ron Hubbard, he actually created a technology that allows people to re-experience events way back in time. They undergo what are called audits, which are pretty much exorcisms of some sort, to remove thetans after continually experiencing events from the past so that they can be recalled vividly. 